Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Katekiss. Today I'm going to be making a video all about using the MPC Live to auto sample, so the auto sampler on the MPC Live. This video is concerning using it in standalone mode controlling external gear. So whatever you have that's uh, set up through MIDI. So for example, a, a synthesizer. If you want the MPC Live to automatically uh, auto sample different notes from it. Now you might be asking, what is this useful for? Well, if you ever take your gear out or you want to take your MPC Live out to do a show or you just want to take it out and work on it somewhere else, you might not be able to take all of your gear with you. So you might want to have the sounds of that gear with you anyway. Or it's just for ease of use of not having to set up your MIDI each time to control your gear. You just you want some nice samples of that gear that you can have in your sample bank. So this will be useful for uh, letting your or making your MPC Live record a bunch of different notes onto like the device itself and then you'll be able to use them again later. So we'll go through some different features in the auto sampler, um, ranging from between getting a very thorough recording of your gear to something that's just quick and dirty. So anyway, without further ado, let me switch the camera around and go to the view of the MPC Live and we'll talk about how to set everything up and how to use it. Okay, see you guys in a second. All right, here we are uh, sitting on a new project uh, on the very first screen, the MIDI screen. Of course, if you were to just like turn on your project to here at the start, you'd be looking at this view right here. So it's in program, uh, like program mode, and you've got program one down right here. So what we're going to be focusing on in this uh, uh, review, sorry, this uh, tutorial is the MIDI mode to, in order to control our external gear. I've already got it set up. You can see my MIDI channel is set to five, and then down here MIDI port is set to A. So there's on the MPC Live, there's A and B, but there's also remote, I don't know how that works, but let's just like talk about A and B. A and B just corresponds to the MIDI jacks in the back. So there's four MIDI jacks, if you can get a view of that, kind of. There's one, two, three, four. Two are internals, or like going in. Two are, two are externals, so they're going out. So you plug in whatever gear you want to control into either A or B on here. Uh, most of my synths are going through A, so all of my synths on this side are going to A. All of my synths on, well, both of my synths on this side are going to B. But we're going to be focusing going down the right wing uh, today, and we're going to use the uh, Arturia Polybrute as our test subject, okay? So let's say you've plugged in your MIDI device into MPC A, or uh, MIDI port A, and then you go directly into the device. Uh, one thing you need to check is you need to know what channel your MIDI device is on, what channel your keyboard is on. So for example, in here for my Polybrute, I would go into settings, and then seven says MIDI, I go there. Um, the Polybrute's a little confusing because um, for channels, see up here, if you can see that, for channels, uh, it has input channel, output channel, but also input channel lower. So I had to set both of them in order to get a control to control properly. And I set them to five. I set this channel to five. So the reason I set this to five is because I've got like uh, one, uh, two, three, four, five. Uh, so, you know, anyway, now you understand that uh, you need to set your MIDI channels so that you're telling the MPC uh, which device to control. But that's that's another video, doing the MIDI stuff. For this, you're just going to go from your M, uh, MPC Live into your uh, device that you're controlling, make sure that the channel is set properly. The second thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your, uh, your outputs for the synthesizer are going into the inputs on the MPC Live. So the inputs are right here. Sorry for the terrible views. Right beside the phono jacks are the inputs, left and right inputs. I've got all of my synthesizers going into two mixers, that one and that one. And uh, basically this mixer is going into this mixer and this mixer is going into the MPC Live. So everything goes in through the same channel and I just use, use things at one at a time or set the volumes uh, as necessary. But let's say you just want to sample one device. You just go from the outputs on your uh, synthesizer to the inputs back here. That's these ones right here, right beside the phono. There's also a little switch right here under the lock that I can't show you very well, a little left and right switch. 
in the right position, it's phono. That's these guys. In the left position, it's line. That's the, these guys. Just make sure it's set to line. <clears throat> anyway, now that we've got that set up and it's set to track one uh, MIDI channel five MPCA, if I press these, you've got some sound and you're actually hearing the synthesizer itself playing through the pads. Now, by default, when it first starts, it starts on this bank. You might not hear anything when you press them or it might sound like nothing's happening. And the reason that is, is because the octave is so low, basically you're just pressing such low notes that you might not be able to hear them on the synthesizer. So just to make sure you set up, go up to a higher octave by pressing this right here. Now you can hear them and you can go higher or you can double click and you can hear higher octaves. So let's start in a higher octave here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what this is set to when you're doing the auto sampling because in the auto sampling you get to define uh, what the range is in the auto sampler itself. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna press menu and I'm gonna press sampler <clears throat> and here I am in the sampling screen. So I don't know if you know how to use this but it's pretty straightforward, just arm it, make some sounds, and as long as the sound exceeds whatever this is set to, then it'll start recording for however long you set to. But we don't want to use this today, we want to use the auto sampler. So let's go into the screen. Here we are in the auto sampler. It says track one, MIDI 01, so now it's using those settings that you already made in your MIDI section. So it's going to use whatever MIDI device and whatever channel you set it to, and that's what it's going to play. It's not going to play anything right now. Okay. So input, uh, record from input one and two, that's just these guys right here, those are one and two. You've got your note range right here, so C2 to C4. So it's telling you C2 is basically like, the, like starting at the C note, and two is how high in the octave, so it's pretty low, but it's, you know, whatever, let's just work with it. Max note is C4. You can change these as much as you want, but we'll just leave it as it is for now. So it's going to be a good range. Now here is note stride. This is important. This is how high the resolution that you're going to record. What I mean by that is if it's set to six, then it's going to play C2 and then it's going to skip six notes. And then it's going to play whatever comes like at the sixth note. And then it's going to skip another six and play the next one and skip another six and play the next one. Now, if you're not too worried about um, like the exact quality of the notes that you play, the exact recording quality or sample quality, then what this will do is um, by skipping every six notes, it's going to record like six or ten in total. And then for all the notes in between the ones that are recorded, it's just going to stretch or shrink in order to change the pitch or the key of the note. So for example, if it was like note stride one, if it was set down to note stride one, then it's going to make a recording of each note between C2 and C4. If you go to note stride 6, then it's only going to record this every sixth note. However, when it does it like that, it will still allow you to play other notes that it hasn't recorded, but it's going to stretch whatever it did record up or down to hit that key. So the resolution of that uh, note won't be absolutely perfect, but it's still workable. And the reason you might want to do that is because you don't want to save so much um, data uh, for samples. You might, you might like be limited for space or whatever and not have enough room to be saving like 50 different samples just for one uh, keyboard or something. So uh, in this first example, we're going to set it to note six so that you can see what it does by default. Um, here it says extend min max notes. What that's going to do is if you go below C2 or you go above C4, it's just going to emulate. It's going to use C2 for the low emulation, so creating lower notes, or it's going to use C4 to create higher notes. So it's going to stretch C4 or shrink C4 to make higher notes, and it's going to stretch C2 to make lower notes. And don't need to worry about that. We'll leave that on by, def by default. Here you've got velocity layers. This is a little confusing on like first glance. But what this is, is I've got it set to layer one and it's velocity value 127. So it's gonna play that note at full velocity. It's gonna pretend that it's pressing the key on the keyboard at full velocity and it's gonna make a recording of that. And then 
if you hit like the pad on here with the recording in it, lighter, it's just gonna lower the volume of it in order to emulate hitting the key uh, softer, more softly. However, if you do layers in here, you do two, three, and four, by default, uh, layer two is set to 96, layer three is set to 64, layer four is set to 32. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna pretend that it's hitting the key more softly. Because on a lot of keyboards, if I hit this hard, it sounds like that. If I hit it lightly, well, there's softly and more hard. So depending on the, le like the strength that I hit the keys on that keyboard, it's actually going to change not just the volume of the sound, but the, like, the essence of the sound itself. So this thing can emulate softer key strikes. But of course, this is going to increase the number of samples that your MPC Live is going to create, which A, takes more time to finish the auto sampling process, and B, it's going to take up a lot more uh, space on whatever like SD card or hard drive, like SSD drive you have inside of your MPC Live. I want to make a quick note here. If you're going to get into auto sampling or if you're going to do any kind of saving on your uh, uh, MPC Live, I highly recommend, I highly recommend getting an SD card or even better, an SSD drive and putting it inside. I really recommend you do not save to the internal memory of the MPC Live. I have heard stories that the more you fill up the, uh, the, the internal storage, the worse your MPC Live functions. So in that way, it kind of sounds similar to a smartphone that with a smartphone, the fuller it gets, the slower it gets. I think the uh, MPC Live is similar to that. So I highly recommend, this is just a side note, I highly recommend you get an SD card or an SSD drive and put it inside here and only save your projects and your samples and everything. Save everything to the external drive, not to the internal storage. Anyway, rant over. For the um, first part of this here, we're gonna turn off all these layers. We're just gonna record everything in full. We're not going to worry about velocity sensitive, sensitivity. Okay, so here we get into sampling. Here it says note length, 3,000 milliseconds, okay? Uh, 1,000 milliseconds is one second, so this is three seconds. So it's going to press the note and hold it for three seconds, and then after that it's going to let it go. So we're going to reduce that speed a little bit. Now, this is important to know. If you want like to record like an organ sound, you're probably gonna want a bit longer, but if you want something like a pluck sound, then you want it to be shorter, okay? So like an organ is like a on off kind of sound. So you might want like a do, you might want a longer recording of it. But a pluck, you don't really need the, the MPC Live to hold the note, like hold it and let it go. You just need it to hit it, right? So that's what you're defining right here is how long the MPC Live is pressing the note. So we're gonna change this from 3,000 milliseconds down to 2,000 milliseconds. Okay, so that's two seconds. Then there's the tail. So the tail is defining how long it's going to record the sound after it finishes playing the note. So it's gonna hold it down for two seconds, let it go, and then it's gonna keep recording for 1,000 milliseconds is one second, so it's gonna keep recording whatever tail end. This is important because if I press the key on here, have a listen. I only tapped the key. The rest of the sound was just basically the release. So you know on the synthesizer, the synthesizer there's ADSR, attack, uh, delay, sustain, and release. So these three are what happen when you're pressing the key, and this is what happens after you let it go. So a sound that has a long tail, or a long release, is gonna play longer after the key is released. So for this right here, let's go to two seconds. 2,000 milliseconds, two seconds, okay? So in total, each sample is gonna be four seconds long. <clears throat> it's gonna be two of the MPC Live pressing it, and two of it recording the sound that the synthesizer makes after the key is let go. Uh, right here, we've got the base name, so it's just the name of all these samples. So it's gonna be, it's gonna name it MIDI01 Auto Sampled, and then it's gonna give it a key name. So it's gonna say C2, uh, um, and then like each note after that is just gonna be named uh, per the note. But this is the base name. So let's just rename this to Poly, because it's the poly brute, okay? So, do it. Now in 
like, m- if you want to be thorough about this, I'm using my polybrute, so I might name it uh, polybrute space, <clears throat> and then whatever the patch name is on here. So let's get out of the settings. This ca- patch name is called cassette RFI. So in here, I might name it polybrute and then cassette RFI. And then that way I have like a very specific um, naming structure for it. I know exactly what sounds those samples are. If I just call it poly, then I know that like if I look at the samples later after I've like closed the project and gone to bed and come back three weeks later and I look at it and I'm like, oh, what did I record for poly? What were those things? I have to actually listen to them to know what they are. And I don't have a very clear idea of how to like, for, for example, find that sound again on my synthesizer and maybe make more samples or something. So I, good naming structure would be like uh, polybrute is the name of the synth and then um, the name of the patch right there. <clears throat> then you can easily find it again in your synthesizer and you also really like quickly know what it is. Okay, here it says um, enable looping. So enable looping is if you press down, like after the things are recorded, if you press down the note on the uh, pads, it'll go, it'll play through the uh, sample, but then as soon as it finishes, it'll start it again. So the do, 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 do. Uh, For this one, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so that way, uh, if I play it, it'll play through the whole sample and then it'll just finish. Um, I've actually tried the auto sampler before, like my first time playing the auto sampler, I made a recording of some really nice samples and I made sure that the timing was right and the tail was right so that I could like hear the full uh, sound of pressing a key. And because of the um, looping, playing it back just sounded terrible. Uh, instead of being able to hear the full note the, and, and the tail and everything, it would just instantly start auto looping and I couldn't really hear the beauty, like the full beauty of the sample that I made. So we've got that right there, Sam, uh, looping, is, looping is turned off. Um, here on completion, so when it's done, it says make current program. So right now, track one is set to MIDI so that it can control the synthesizer in order to make these samples. When it finishes, as is currently set, it will still stay on MIDI and I'll have to change it to key groups uh, on my own. But if you click make current program right here, then as soon as it finishes doing the auto sampling um, process, it is going to automatically switch it uh, switch to it in key groups. So track one will no longer be MIDI, it will be the key groups, and then you can start playing all the notes immediately. So we're gonna do that. Let's do an overview or like let's go check all of our settings again. So we're set to uh, track one MIDI one, that's what it's recording from. That's the synthesizer that we set up. We've got note C2 to C4. We've got a six note stride. So this is mostly default. <clears throat> We've got one layer of velocity. We've got our note length set to 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. We've got our tail set to 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. That's how long it's going to let each key play and let the song, like the sound finish after. We've got our looping set to off so that when we play them in the key group, they don't automatically loop. It'll just play the notes and it'll let them finish. Auto trim start. Uh, that I think is for, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what auto trim start is for. <laughs> Make current program when it's finished. So it'll automatically switch to it. We're going to click do it. You can hear them playing. forgot to mention, you can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, it tells you how long it's going to take to finish it. Almost done. There we go. Okay, so it just played the synthesizer, but now you can see it automatically switched to key group. The key group is called poly. If I play them here, Now you can hear a bit of aliasing on that. That's because I'm in such a high octave. I'm outside of the range that the MPC Live recorded the notes to. So right now we're not hearing. Let's turn this uh, full level on so we don't have to keep slamming on the pads. There's aliasing because <clears throat> the MPC Live is artificially going to a higher note than I actually recorded. If I go into the lower keys, Wow, that's nice.
Okay, so if I go uh, into a lower one, you can hear how nice these ones sound. Then they sound a lot better because they're not artificially going higher or lower. It's not stretching or shrinking the sounds. These are the actual samples as they're recorded. So recording this is just like recording anything else uh, for your Polybrute, or sorry, for your, <laughs> for your MPC Live. I keep getting things mixed up. So let's quickly do a recording here. Okay, sorry, uh, what's going on here is my Polybrute is playing at the same time. That's kind of annoying. The uh, sequencer is playing. Let's turn that off. Okay, if we play it back, I don't think it'll have that in there. Sorry, the, the extra stuff you're hearing there was, uh, I guess the uh, when I pressed the play button on here, it automatically triggered the uh, Polybrute to start playing its sequence. Let's give it a try here. There we go, very simple. So <clears throat> I've now got those things in there and if I go into, like if I press shift and bra uh, menu right here, I'll go into browse, uh, is that the right screen? No, sorry, wrong one, wrong one. Let's go back to main right here and let's go to track two for example and go to here, okay? And then we go to assign samples. You'll see the samples that I just made now, because of the way that we auto sampled that there with this, like the value for stride set to six, it didn't record very many notes between C2 and C4 because it skipped so many of them. So we're going to do this one more time, but this time we're going to set our stride to one. We're going to capture one note, uh, like each note between C2 and C4. So let's go back to main. Let's turn track two to MIDI. Let's set our MIDI port to A, because that's what my device is set to. Our MIDI channel to 5. And then when we play it. There we go. Then we're going to go to Menu, Sampler, Auto Sample up here. We've got everything set like before. Let's go back up to the top here. Everything's set but like, like before, it knows like track 2 MIDI 1, everything's set right, C2 to C4. This time we're going to turn the stride down to 1. So it's now it's going to record each note between C2 and 4, C4 instead of skipping 6 notes. We're going to go a little bit further this time, just for the fun of it, we're going to put 2 layers of velocity. So now it's going to record twice, no, let's not do layer 2, let's do it a little bit more, let's do layer 3. So now it's going to have 127 and 64. It's going to play the same note twice on the synthesizer, but it's going to strike the key at full, full velocity and strike the key at half velocity to try to catch those different sounds. Uh, 2,000 milliseconds, 2,000 milliseconds. We're going to set the tail a little longer. We're going to set it to 3,000 milliseconds, so it'll be a five-second sample in total each. We're not going to have looping on. If we had looping on, okay, if we had looping on, then it tells you where the loop starts at 5,000 milliseconds or like half a second. So this, like, the further into the sample you set it, um, the less of a looping sound, like ding, 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 instead of do, 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 do. Uh, and then the loop end is uh, 2,500 milliseconds, so that's how long it plays the note before it starts again. And instead of, instead of starting where the note is going like that, it'll start in the middle of it like this. But again, I don't want to use um, I don't want to use the auto looping or like the the looping feature. I just want it to play the note. So let's turn that off. Uh, auto trim start. Uh, <clears throat> make current program. Got that. Um, auto trim start just means that like it it won't play the start of the note when it does the looping. <clears throat> Okay, and then we've got, this. it's going to take 240 seconds, so uh, four minutes, all right? So I'm just going to start this, press do it, and I'm going to pause the video and resume it again when it's almost done, okay? It's going to take four minutes to do this. 
All right. I said I was going to um, start again, like when this thing was almost done. But I wanted to give you the chance to hear this. You can actually hear each note being played twice, softly. And then hard. Okay, so that's because we set the layer, we set two layers. So it's gonna play each note softly and hard. And it's gonna make a sample for that. Okay, I'm gonna pause it again and I'll come back when it's done. All right, it just finished doing all the recordings. It automatically went to the key group there because we have that in the settings. If you've forgotten what those settings are, I'll just quickly show you in menu, sampler, See if I can press this properly. Key group, uh, down here on completion, make current program. If that is selected, then it's automatically gonna take you back to the screen and set you to the key group with the MPC-01 auto sampled. I didn't rename the uh, um, samples this time, like in the, the group, right? like uh, in that screen, blah, blah, blah. In that screen where it lets you name it, I didn't rename it. So it just says MIDI-01 auto sampled. But here, if I play them, I'm having technical difficulties here. Give me a sec here. Okay, I got it figured out. For whatever reason, if I go to a lower octave than it uh, recorded, it won't play them. So I guess I didn't set the setting there to make it automatically stretch and shrink uh, forward and backwards. So it will not play the notes it didn't record. It will only play the notes it did record this time. So there are a lot of notes recorded in here. Each one is twice and each one is at a, another velocity. So if I go to programs right here, and then I go to assign samples, you can see all of the samples that I made. I made quite a lot of them. So that means that this is going to be a lot more storage, but it also means that it's going to be a lot more um, accurate uh, to the sounds. Like you're going to have um, each note, and if you lightly press the pad, let me just go back to key groups here. If you lightly press it and press it hard, it's on full level. If I lightly press the pad, it's going to use the quieter sample, and it will adjust the volume up or down up to the quieter sample. But then when I press it harder, it's going to use the louder sample. So that is to emulate uh, velocity. And if I did four layers on there, all different volumes, then I'd have even more um, accuracy like vo for velocity. So, and I can also go up, no, maybe not. I only recorded two octaves. I've got some in here. So I've basically got two groups. I've got um, the second uh, tier, or let's just say, like um, from banks one to four, I've got four. And then from banks uh, five to eight, I've got a bit of five, like most of five. That's as far as it recorded, and it won't play anything higher than that. So you can, of course, set the octaves to do much higher octaves and much lower octaves if you want to. Uh, it's just going to take more space. But as I've got it set right now, let's play what we recorded. Oh, that's loud. So now I can record that in here. Let's record it. Some of those notes are really quiet. So as you can hear, it's using the uh, um, lower or like the quieter recording and then adjusting the volume down. 
Uh, but anyway, I think that's pretty much all you need to know about that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about the auto sampler. Uh, I hope you guys found this video useful. Don't forget after you're done this to save your project. I'm gonna save my project here. Uh, all samples, there's all the samples I made. Oops. There's all the samples I made, so I can just save as. Go to an external drive, it's very important. Projects one, just call this poly. Poly A, sure, poly A. Do it, and save. And now it's gonna save all the samples and that project. And you're good to go. Okay, well that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you like this content and I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, one quick thing I will mention, if you look at my um, YouTube account, you'll see that the video before this is a giveaway for a um, Texas, or sorry, no, not Texas Instruments, a Teenage Engineering uh, PO Speak. So it's just a little cool little device. I actually have it over here. Let me just bring the camera over here and show you. I'm doing a giveaway for this little guy. So if you look at the last video, all you have to do to enter is to leave a comment on the video back there and I will do a draw um, at the uh, on the 15th of March. So to win this guy. Uh, I will say that I'm going to find out how hard it is to send this to whichever, like whoever the winner is because I'm in China, but uh, I think I can do it. So yeah, that's the giveaway for this. Just look at my uh, YouTube account. It's the video before this. It's called I'm Doing a Giveaway, and you can have a chance to win this right here, okay? The contest is going until March 15th, so get your comments in there. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. This is Katakus, out.